look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 In hindsight You make mistakes, we're learning from the In hindsight be your today and your tomorrow In hindsight is so much clearer now Have you ever wondered how your assumptions shape your reality? Today, we're diving deep into this intriguing topic with Jerry Emeka, an entrepreneur, an expert in the law of assumption, and the teachings of Neville Goddard. Jerry's journey from a first-generation Nigerian household in Sugarland, Texas, to becoming the founder and CEO of Imaginarium LLC is nothing short of inspiring. He has transformed his passion for the human mind into a powerful tool for helping others achieve their dreams. Let's explore how Jerry's insight can help us all understand the power of our thoughts, thoughts and assumptions. Hello, Jerry. How are you doing today? How's it, Lee? How's it going? <laughs> hey, it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. I had three takes on that one. So, well, well you know, <laughs> it's early morning for you. It's early morning for me. What time is it for you? You're calling from where again? Uh, I'm on Big Island, Hawaii. Uh, it's like six six twenty right now. Ooh, I got you up nice and early. Yeah, yeah. I, pre I appreciate you jumping on. I I used to live there as well uh, for three really? years. Yeah, but I was not Big Island. I was actually on Oahu. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So the the one time I went to the Big Island, and to be fair, I was in the military, right? Mm, but the one mm -hmm. time I went to the Big Island, the one time we went to the very tip top on a mission. Mm. And I did not know Hawaii was that cold. So yeah, it you was, went up the mountain. Yeah, we went all the way to the top. So it was it was pretty pretty cold up there. Uh, yeah. So what led you to what led you to um, Hawaii? Well, that that's going to be what we're talking about today. Actually, um, it's the same same principles that I um, that I help my clients with, that I help just individuals with, which is mm -hmm. understanding that that reality actually um, <clears throat> reflects what you're holding on to in consciousness. Okay. So what brought me here wasn't actually Hawaii in it, in and of itself. Um, it was home that brought me here. So I, uh, I prayed on the feeling of home instead mm. of um, well, hold on. The, the long of the short of that is I was living in Chicago at the time with my family, my small family. And, um, as we were uh, dealing with COVID and all those type of things, uh, crime was like just going through the roof, literally coming through our door, like a bullet came through our window. Oh my goodness. Had my wife not gotten up five minutes prior, it would have gone right through her. Uh, catalytic converter got stolen from our car. All these negative things were literally surrounding us. Right. And I was talking with one of my mentors and he's like, well, why don't you go home then? I was like, I am home. He's like, no, 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 no. Go into your closet and shut the door. And so I started just, I would, every day I would just, I would meditate on the feeling of home. Uh -huh. And I did that for about a month, got a vision. Mm -hmm. I was done with that. And then on January 8th, a month after the vision, I woke up thinking that I lived in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't live in Hawaii. This is Chicago. <laughs> it's cold. And uh, I check my phone to see what time it is. It's three thirty in the morning, and there's um, a notification that says one way tickets to Honolulu for ninety nine dollars. <laughs> and um, I, wow. I fifteen minutes later, I bought the tickets, and I told my wife we're moving to Hawaii in six weeks. So we came here sight unseen. We didn't know anyone. We didn't know anything. And then within, I guess um, I guess two within two months. Two and a half months of us moving to the Big Island, we found ourselves on this farm that we now live on, that we've been living on for three years. Okay. And um, we live a rural, simple, beautiful life. We work with our hands. We, you know, we grow food. We grow crops. Wow. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We, um, yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. That sounds that sounds amazing. Really Completely does. different life. Yeah, yeah. To go from that one extreme to to the next is yeah an amazing transition, and we do focus on transitions here on Hindsight the Podcast. This is Hindsight the Podcast, as I just said, and you know, you gave us a transition from Chicago, and why you did that to Hawaii. You went to your closet, you thought about it, you had a vision, you had a dream, you got tickets. I read this book called The Mist right a mm. while ago. Yeah, just just Quello. here, 
exactly. So just hearing the things that you say, like when you when you know your what is it, your personal journey, your personal legend, right? Um, the universe conspires, right? So just hearing you tell your story, the bullet hole and the wife moving at that time, and you know moving out the way, and then you go into the closet, you think about Hawaii, and then boom, ninety nine ticket, yeah. you know one way tickets no, to Hawaii. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about Hawaii. Again, Hawaii has never crossed my mind as a place that I would ever live in my life. That's right. a place that only wealth, like super wealthy people live or yeah, Hawaiians. Yeah. yeah. You know, not a normal or the military. everyday person. <laughs> right. Or military folks or military folks, li literally, because I, I had a brother or co cousin-in-law that, that is also military. Yeah. And he was stationed out in Oahu. But to 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 the alchemist, interestingly enough, that's actually mm -hmm. one of my favorite books. Yeah. You know, when he's when he's headed to uh, the pyramids mm -hmm. and he gets there, mm -hmm. right, he's met all the characters, he gets there and then he goes back home mm -hmm. only to realize that's where the pyramids actually were the whole time. Yep. That's what I was going through when I, when I meditated on the feeling of home, instead of mm. me going out, outside into this external world and trying to force something to happen. Okay. We got to move. We got to get to the next place. We got to, right. we got to make it happen. Right. Actually go to the source of where things happen and allow that to unfold is, is the lesson that I learned from the alchemist. Yeah. And that's where true alchemy is. It's it's the transformation of what's going on within you as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to make something happen. Because like the main character of, of the alchemist, you know, he's going on that journey trying to find something. Yes. And he's trying, you know, he's trying to keep the girl of his dreams. He's trying to <laughs> make sure he meets the right people. Right. Meanwhile, he got the gems he needed at the beginning of the book. The whole, yep. Yep. He had it the whole time. But he had to walk that lesson. He had to learn, walk that journey, learn that lesson to appreciate it, right? And to understand. And and a lot of that's life. That's mm -hmm, life, mm -hmm. right? So that's yep. awesome. All right. All right. So hindsight, let's talk a little bit about yourself, your Nigerian mm -hmm. background. Let's give a little bit of context and then how you started with Neville Goddard's teachings. Teachings. How that, yeah. yeah. So, gosh. Uh, so I... So again, you, you said it earlier, I, I started in Sugarland, Texas, yeah. uh, as just, you know, first generation Nigerian kid. I, I, I had always this, I always had this assumption that me and my parents were growing up at the same time because they mm -hmm. moved to America pretty much like a year before I was born. So we're learning this, you know, American yeah. culture together. And when I turned 18, that's when I started venturing out on my own. I got into entertainment really early in my life. I, I started singing when I was eight. Mm. I sang in Carnegie Hall when I was 18. I started, I did some wow. pilots on TV shows. Eventually mm -hmm. I, I was forced to go to college and um, I went to a university, a little small university. And that's when I fell, truly fell in love with entertaining people. I got into uh, radio. I had the number one college radio station. From there, I ended up working for Clear Channel Radio, like part time. Within like six months, I, I became a, um, a program director of my own radio station. They literally gave me my own letters wow. to, to manage and program and all that. But then I quickly realized I did don't like corporate. <laughs> uh, so I, I then, um, I moved on to, and that's when my entrepreneurial endeavors really started taking foot. And I, um, I became a, a marketer for some theater companies. Then I moved to New York city to begin become an actor and, and producer. Mm -hmm. And while I was out there in New York, I, I started having a spiritual awakening, um, started realizing that there was more going on in this world than I was taught. Um, but I couldn't really pinpoint it until I ran into a video of a guy named Wayne Dyer okay. who, who was teaching that, uh, that thoughts become things and, um, 
and then uh, about the Tao Te Ching. I, I was raised Catholic, by the way. So, um, you know, these are all like kind of weird, interesting ways of talking about spirit. I'm, I'm used to, you know, you know, the, the rosaries. I'm used to yeah, praying to yeah, saints yeah. and all that type of stuff. And this guy is saying that it's all within. And right. it was the first time I really ever heard anything like that. And he started talking about the Tao Te Ching and this gentleman named Neville. And um, I went researching. I, I got into Taoism, um, which absolutely shifted my perspective on life and mm -hmm. like my relationship with God, my relationship with, with humanity and all that stuff. And then I started listening to this Neville guy. And I listened to this like old record from like the 1950s where he's, he's saying that our inner conversations is what's creating our reality. I was like, what? Inner conversations? That's a thing. I, I didn't realize I'm talking to myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, and that we can, um, that what we are imagining about yeah. ourselves is what re gets reflected in the world. Right. And he tells this story about this girl who's riding on this, on this trolley who's mourning the loss of her father and um, and she's crying and that the, the tears that she was experiencing weren't sal the salt of the tears that she was experiencing weren't um, wasn't the salt of her tears, but rather the salt of ocean spray. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I started testing it. He said, test it. And I tested yeah. it. And sure enough, I, I manifested a bunch of stuff. Let's just say that. OK, okay. I, it, it was it was, it was an eye opener, absolutely changed my life. And I, I became obsessed. I was like, I got to know more. What is this? And, um, but really what Neville was really trying to point out to folks is not only is that not this, not only this law, this law of assumption, like what you're assuming to be true about you mm -hmm. is true, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. rather you aren't, you aren't this character you've been, you've known yourself as you're actually the awareness of the character that you mm. know yourself as. Right. And when you truly know this awareness, you start to recognize that that awareness is this very same power and wisdom that actually sustains the universe. It's what gives life to not just you, not just mm -hmm. your kids, the trees, the birds, everything that you know yeah. is the light, is God. That's essentially it. And that yeah, awareness yeah. of being, that spark of light, that, 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 is you mm -hmm. is also me is also my wife is also your wife is everyone yeah and then once you right. realize that you start to realize that we really are all one we really are connected but rather we are just arrangements mm -hmm. of the same mind and so you and i lee we fall mm -hmm. in and out of states of consciousness whether right. we know it or not and mm -hmm. the more aware of this we become the more the more ease, simplicity, joy, abundance you have in your life. Got you. All right, so let's back it up real quick. Mm -hmm. What is the law of assumption? The, the law of assumption essentially is this, that, the, that a person's assumptions about themselves and their world is their, is their perception. So if you assume something to be true about you, that mm -hmm. is what the world's going to give back to you, whether you know it or not. You know, they're, you know, if a person's having negative experiences in their life, I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but it's all based on assumptions or things that you've accepted to be true about yourself. So once you change that assumption mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and actually persist in the assumption, the new assumption, your mm -hmm. world will change. Yeah. Um, and how you know what state of consciousness that you're in is based on your reactions to life. And if you take on this law, if you truly consciously take on this law, you'll start to recognize that having radical responsibility yeah. is, is why we are here on this planet. It's to have these experiences so we can transcend them and recognize that we aren't, we aren't these experiences that we're having. We're the ones who are witnessing or becoming aware of it breaking down the law of assumption it would be yeah. this it would be this an assumption though false if persisted in will harden into fact mm. 
an example of that would be, let's say you were seven years old and your parents said to you, money doesn't grow on trees. Like you, you wanted to get like some candy from the store and your parents said to you, money doesn't go on trees and you get upset. You have yeah. this emotional reaction to it, right? Right. That moment is when you accept it. And now if you persist in that accepting or persist in that assumption, that's how you're going to start to see the world. And that's yeah. how the world is going to reflect to you. So you're constantly going to run into money troubles. But yeah. as soon as you say, wait a minute, you, you run into a trillionaire mentor and he says, mm. no, money's easy. Money's easy. But you still have an assumption that money's hard. That's, that's what you're persisting in until right. you switch the persistent assumption. Okay, money's easy. I come up with million dollar ideas. I yeah. come up with million dollar ideas. People talk about affirmations and this, any other. I'm not necessarily talking about affirmations. Okay, good. Um, I'm, I'm specifically saying what you believe to be true within your own self. Right. So, and affirmations can help you get there, but affirmations isn't what does it. It's, it's literally your awareness. Got you. So if you, I, if you start, mm -hmm. no, yeah, yeah. Cause I was going to ask about affirmations. It sounds kind of similar, but I'm gonna pull back now. You were getting ready to, to follow up and, and get me yeah, straight. I, Go ahead. I, I used to, I, I used to <laughs> play with assumption or with the affirmations all the yeah. time, but they never worked. That was constantly bad. It was, it was a constant war. Okay. I was like, God, there's gotta be an easier way about this, which is what I help people understand now, which is, why don't you just try to just sit and be the person you want to be? Mm. Simple as that. You know, you're used to a certain way of being. You got right. into the state state of consciousness unknowingly. Right. So now what you have to do is you have to actively, consciously uh, sit and know that you already are the person you want to be. And if you can persist in that, mm -hmm. it will it will it will harden into fact. And it doesn't take long. It's 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 just a rearrangement. It's just, it's a rearranging of your mind. Um, I mean, how I got it is how I got to Hawaii. I started assuming yeah. that I was home, despite the fact that my external circumstances were telling me I'm in Chicago, like everything's being stolen from me, all these things. Yeah. I had to actively meditate on the fact that I was home. And now the fun thing is, this is the fun thing about it. I don't know how I'm going to get home. That's not my job. Right. My job is not to figure out how. My job is just to be that person now. Yeah. So like I, another example, a negative example of it is. Okay. People will say it's like, oh, you got to work hard to make money. That's an assumption. That's just an assumption yeah. that people have that even society holds on to be true, but I, I am, I'm proof. My clients are proof that actually you can start assuming that, Oh, business is easy. Yeah. And if you start assuming that business is easy, guess what's going to happen? Business is going to be easy. It's, it's be not easy. to say that you won't work. You'll yeah. be compelled to do work, but you're going to find it to be easy. You're going to be, find it to be joyful. You're going to find it to be fun. I get it. I get that. Hey, so where did you start to hone in? And so, you know, cause I know it's just the law of assumption didn't just hit you, right? Like a bolt of lightning, like you touched on a little bit, but what made you really made you dive in to studying, you know, yeah. the law of assumption and, and all these other things. So what Neville, so Neville has so many lectures. He has so many books. You could, you, you can keep listening to him. In fact, most of his lectures were actually way more spiritual than right. they are, um, than they are, uh, I guess, gimmicky, you know, <clears throat> he, new, you and, know, all that and stuff. He, he was an entertainer too. He was an entertainer too, right? Before. He was. He was Neville he was an entertainer. Yeah. He was. He was in like the 20s and the early 30s during the Depression and stuff. Right. Um, and then but while he was doing that, apparently he was he was really into spirituality. His dancing yeah. partner, his dancing partner told his wife before they got married, you need to dress yourself up in the Bible if you ever want to get his interest. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Uh,
And I, that's you, awesome. You, you could probably say the same thing to my wife as well. <laughs> She's like, sorry, sorry, honey, that's sexy and everything, but it's not, it's not scripture. No, I'm <laughs> but uh, so, so what got me into it? So at the time that I discovered Neville, I didn't believe. I was like, I don't know about this. This is, you know, weird. And so I would test it on this. I would test it on small things. He has like, there's these tests, like you could imagine climbing a ladder. You can imagine mm -hmm. holding, um, like holding an apple, holding a tennis ball and all these things. And then you kind of just test it on other things. And okay, can I... Can I assume that I have a job that pays me a ridiculous amount of money for barely any work and I don't have to sell anything? Sure enough, right. two weeks later, someone is like, Jerry, this job is like perfect for you. I was like, what? It, sure enough, it was. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is interesting. So I got a mentor who was also into Neville's teachings and, um, and his work. And uh, we got to working together. I was able to travel, travel the world for like, the most, the most interesting, ridiculous ways that I, I of myself could not have devised, could not have planned. <laughs> yeah. And I really became, came into his work. Hmm. And then I started getting into his more spiritual, this more spiritual side of his teachings, which right. is to say that, um, <clears throat> I and God are one, not this, hmm. not this flesh being called Jerry is God, right. but the, 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 the essence that would even call itself I, that is God. That's the I am right. that I am. And I, that's when I truly started to understand what that meant yeah. uh, when, 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 that, when that came about. And that okay. Christ is your wonderful human imagination. It's God in action. Yeah. Wonderful. Did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. You did. You did. <laughs> hey, so yeah. now we're going to go to the other side. What are some what are some common misconceptions that people have about the law of assumption? Like I kind of went to affirmations, right? So what what is some other misconceptions that people have in 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 you know, set mm. us straight. Some um some common misconceptions. Uh well, a, a lot of times people will will come into this work or come, come to work with somebody like myself yeah. and still have all their old ways of doing things, you know, using their mind, mindset work, uh, shadow work. Okay. Uh, psychologies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all those type of things, which are all good. They're all fine. But when you really understand what's being taught, you, you can skip all that and go directly to the source. Like you can buy your religion wholesale and, uh -huh. um, you know, go directly that. to the source. Right. Um, so like a, a, a misconception, well, you did the affirmations thing, but yeah, a, a big misconception is techniques is what manifests. That's not true. Okay. You know, whether it's affirmations or scripting, goal setting, Mm-hmm. Therapy, none of those are actually what manifest for you. It's what you are holding onto in consciousness that manifests. In other mm. words, so affirmations or scripting, goal setting, what you name the technique you think you use to manifest something, that's actually just a tool to point you in the right direction to mm. actually start holding onto something in consciousness. But at this right. very moment that you're listening to me right now, you could literally just assume you already are the person you want to be. As a matter of fact, this is actually what I tell people. You are yeah. the person you want to be. The very fact that okay. you even have the desire tells me that you already are that person. It's your refusal to believe it that makes it not so. Mm. So as soon as you accept that, God, wouldn't it be lovely to go on vacation right now? Yeah, mm -hmm. it would be great. Except that you are, except that you're already on vacation. That's all you need to do. Mm. But most people don't operate there because you know they they're attracted. They they think they're the external world. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to go put in 20 more hours. Well, that's an assumption, mm -hmm. right? Like you're assuming yeah. that's true, but 
you, yeah. you, in hindsight, you can look back on your own life and see there are so many things that occurred in your life that you're like, you can't explain how that actually unfolded. It's just it's true. Yeah, that's true. Right. You didn't you didn't do techniques. You didn't you didn't reach out to the right person. You did. It was all kind of like a beautiful unfolding that happened for you. And what Neville taught and what I teach is that the reason why it happened is because you assumed it, whether you knew yeah. it or not. Right. But what Neville and myself and others like myself are trying to help people understand is you can be conscious of what you accept to be true. Like an example, a couple of weeks ago, I'm hanging out on the beach and mm-hmm. um, a gentleman like sees me chilling there. He just wants to compliment me, I guess. And um, we get to talking. And he's telling me how he just moved to Big Island a year ago and he lives up in the northern part of the island, super, super rich neighborhood, a bunch of white people. He was the only black person there. And I was just like, and, and they're, 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 they're racist. I was like, OK, hold on, pause. Yeah. I, I had to stop him. I was like, is that true? Yeah. He's like, I mean, they, they treat me this way and they treat me that way. And I was just like, pause. I want you to hear yourself. You are accepting right. as true that. The people you are surrounded by don't like you because of the color of your skin. If that were actually true, yeah. do you think they would let you be in that neighborhood? Right. <laughs> yeah. They would figure out it's some true. way to get you out. Some way. So who yeah. is it? So who is it? So who is it that's actually the racist? I said to him. Mm. He goes, it's like, it's not even you. You're just accepting something to be true yeah. and it's preventing you from seeing the opportunities that are surrounding you. You mm. can only see what you are being. You can only wow. see what you are being. All right. I'm a brand new client. Mm-hmm. I'm coming to see you, Jerry. What would be a reason why? What is the main, what is an overarching reason that your clients seek you out people will will seek me out is because they've tried they feel like they've tried everything Mm -hmm. sometimes they come to me because they're trying to get get with their significant other like some breakup happened or they're just sick of being single they've done the dating apps they've done the relationship coaches nothing seems to work or Mm -hmm. Like I've had clients that have business success. They've, they've, they've made their multiple millions, Yeah. but they, they're like, now what, what am I supposed to do? And I have a conversation with them and it turns out that like, they kind of just stumbled into the job. They don't even know how they got to the million. It just, it just happened. Right. It was just like a side business that turned into something. And now they're like, feel stuck because they, they don't know what to do now. Got it. And so they, they come to somebody like me and it's like, or, or um, another example would be health issues. I've had people come to me with health issues. They've wow. tried everything and all this stuff. And again, what I point out to them is all the external things that you're doing, you were compelled to do, whether you knew it or not. Mm-hmm. And all the, all the trappings, all the external things that you're doing will only get you so far. But if you haven't changed your state of consciousness, you're always going to come back to that, that neutral point you're, you're setting. So that, that's why people come to work with me. They, they, they believe they've tried everything. Mm-hmm. So I come to you. We talked about the, the law of assumption, um, but you have some other tools in your toolkit. Right. Some other beliefs and things that you use when consulting your, your clients. So I come to you. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Is it all based off no, no, of the keep law going. of assumption? Keep going. Okay. But, but, but is it all based off of the laws of assumption? Is mm-hmm. that the core? Okay. All right. So I go and, and I just want to be somebody who I think I'm supposed to be, but I haven't reached that level yet. I haven't been successful at breaching that gap. Mm-hmm. What what is the first thing you think you would say to me? What do you want? Yeah, I would I would ask you what do you want? Mm-hmm. No, usually what will happen is they'll tell me their story and they'll tell me everything that they don't want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I I ask them what they want. Once they tell me what they want, I then ask them. Well, if you were that person. 
how would you feel? What would it feel like? Mm. Or what, what do you think you would hear? Like, what would a friend say to you if you were this person? Right. Or what do you think you would be doing? All right. And they tell me. And I say, all right, cool. Now assume that you mm. are hearing that friend or assume that you already are that person. And they'd be like, okay. And they assume it and it like it shows up in there. It immediately shows up. That's the that's wow. the interesting thing. It immediately shows up. Whatever right. anybody who's listening right now, whatever it is that you want, you want a vacation, you want a promotion, you want a new job, you want a job, mm -hmm. you want the love of your life, you want to you want to see a change in your spouse. What would it feel like six months, a year yeah. after? you got you you became this person right they'd be like like you just it shows up yeah great yeah yeah now persist in that, in that feeling assumption. yeah persist wow. in, like hold on to that state of consciousness because the state of consciousness or i should say the assumption if persisted in hardens into fact right so you, okay. you have a podcast right now. Before you started yeah. your podcast, you were probably humming and hawing. You're like, should I do it? Should I not? But as soon as you were just like, no, I'm doing it. All of a sudden, you're moving in a certain way. Right. Certain people start to show up. Ideas yeah. start to come to you, right? It's That's the same true. thing with, with what I'm offering. So gotcha. usually when people come to me, I work with them. Like I have a I have a three-month program. I also have an ongoing program like an ongoing group program that, um, that clients enjoy. I also do one-on-ones. Right. Um, like I have a client right now <clears throat> who we worked, we worked together with Excuse like me. two years ago. Yeah. And, um, we did the three month program and I was like, yeah. and we were done when I tell all my clients, I'm not looking for followers. I'm mm -hmm. literally trying to teach you who you are and how this works. Right. Well, he comes back to me like a year after and he's just like, I was like, are you good? Everything cool? He's like, oh, everything's good. I'm just working right. on these new ventures and I just want you on my team. <laughs> so he like hired me for two years, <laughs> right? He recognized yeah, yeah. he was just like, because part of also what I do is I do coach. So it's like, I ask questions. Mm. I try yeah. to, I try to, I try to, you know, pick things out. I, I try to show like certain blocks and, yeah. and assumptions that you might be holding, things like that. Okay. But if you're coming to me for the first time, yeah. If you're coming to me for the first time, I would I would walk you through the simple steps of just like what do you want? Okay? What would what mm -hmm. would imply that you already had what you want? And then I would just help you persist in that state, that state of consciousness. I'm remembering I'm I'm remembering one of my first clients. <laughs> When we started working together, we met in a like self-development course or something that I quit because I was like, this, this is way too hard. Um, and he came to me and just like, Jerry, like, can you help me out with this stuff? And he was in real estate sales and um, it was COVID and he was on the verge of quitting. He was super depressed on the verge of quitting because like mm -hmm. no one's, it's COVID. No one, apparently nobody's buying homes and all the, right. that type of stuff. And he was nowhere near his yearly goal. And it was like half the year had passed. Mm. And um, we got to working together. By the time we were done, he was doing, his goal was to do 7 million, 7 million in sales. By the time right. we were done in the three months we worked together, he had, he had surpassed that and done 10 million in sales. Wow. By the end of that year, it was 11. <clears throat> the next year he was um, voted who's who of Chicago real estate. He became like the high man on the totem pole in his friends group. He was the low man. He was like shy, yeah. you know, kept to himself type of thing. Started going to church again. He has this beautiful girlfriend now. Mm -hmm. He came to me to work on his career. Right. But all these other things unfolded. Why? Because he learned how to change his assumptions about his life. Hmm. Right. People come to me thinking they're coming for one thing. Wow. I come to find out that there's this other thing yeah. that seems like it's not that big of a deal to them. We mm -hmm. work on that one thing and it's like a fl the floodgates open because they understand that it's it's them. 
They yeah. take radical responsibility. I love and it. again, I, I, I'll say this in this same story. When he was when he was working with me, he was under the impression because half of the year was over that he was going to have to grind it out, grind it out mm-hmm. in order to get the numbers. And I was like, mm-hmm. no, 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 not with me. I'm not that guy. Yeah. Right. I I will. I'm assuming <clears throat> that you can make the sales you want with with less effort. And he goes, no, no, no. I mean, that can't. I was like, when you first started in your career, right? Mm-hmm. Would you say it's easier now to make the sales that you make now than it was when you first started? He was just like, oh, yeah, it's totally easier. I mean, it's, it's nothing. I was like, exactly. Right. <laughs> Made my point. It, it's, so if you start, right? So I, I use people's experiences just to point out to them. It's like, you've already been doing this. I'm actually not teaching you anything new. It's not a magic yeah. trick. It's not um, anything. <clears throat> I'm just teaching you how you've created your life up until this point. And now that you're conscious of it, how to continue to create your life. Right. And so once, once you totally understood all that, I mean, everything shifted for him. Um, gotcha. Uh, and I mean, I could tell so many other stories. I mean, I've, I've had people, I've had clients in Australia during lockdowns who, um, they wanted to move COVID. to another part of the country, but the government said, that's a that's not happening. Mm. Australia had very, very restrictive uh, lockdown policies like you couldn't okay. leave like past 10 minutes out of your house, out of your home. And um, she was able to manifest her big move across the country, despite the fact that all the legal parameters, all that stuff said no, she was mm-hmm. able to do that. I told you about Hawaii. Know. Yeah. I mean, I I have so many stories and, so these and are, it breaks, it breaks all the laws of logic and reason yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Those are great stories. Um, and you got me, uh, very interested, but let's, let's do a little hindsight as well. Mm-hmm. You seem very locked in mm-hmm. and you're helping people. You're bringing them along, right? That's cool. But can you remember or talk of a time when it could be anything, right? But you just felt like giving up on mm. whatever and and if you can if you can recall like what kept you going yeah well i i've fallen into that a number of times in my life okay what's kept me going again it's like this there's this spark where it's just like this can't be it mm-hmm. there's there's always this sense of and i don't I don't really get to this place anymore because I, because I understand the law, but yeah, in my life, I've always found myself in a situation where I'm like, man, how did I get here? And how do I get out of here? And it's like, right. Yeah. There's gotta be something. There's gotta be something mm-hmm. here. I'm an example that's popping up in my mind right now is when <laughs> this is, just, this is a funny story. This isn't a, a tragic one, but this is kind of <laughs> okay. funny. Uh, I was graduating college and, uh, and I, I hadn't looked for a job at all. I, I was just, I was, I was a college student, you know, I was doing my radio, radio show, I was doing all that yeah. stuff. And it, I just didn't prep for a career. And my dad calls me like two weeks before graduation. He's just like, so what are you going to do? And I was like, I, I got a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I told him I had a job. I was like, don't worry about me. I'm good. Yeah. And I hung up the phone and I'm sitting there being like, God, why did you tell him that? Like, yeah. <laughs> there's no reason to say that to him. Right. And I just sat there and just like, well, now I have to get a job. Like I, 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 I and not just any job. I had to get a job in broadcasting, like which wow. I, don't, I don't know if y'all can imagine this, but that's not the easiest job to get. And um, <laughs> so I think it was. I think it was like two weeks later or something like that. I, I mean, yeah. I had no other choice. I just went to the radio station. Of course. I, yeah. I went there in a suit. I sat on the couch. Late, uh, the, the receptionist, um, Tammy, I think her, was her name. Mm-hmm. She goes, can I help you? I was just like, yeah, I have, a, I have an interview with uh, um, um, Danny. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, she's like, well, you know, he's on air right now. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just here early. <laughs> <laughs> Make, it, right. Make it up as you go. But he walks out of the radio station as soon as it was over. He brings me into his studio. He gets asked me some questions, this, any other. Oh, He's nice. just like, can you start on Friday? I was like, bet, let's go. Yeah, so yeah. I've, I've always had this in me where, 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 I'm, where, I'm, in the, where I'm on the ropes. Mm-hmm. I don't do this mm-hmm. anymore because I, I, I recognize what's going on. Yeah. But I found myself on the ropes. So, uh, I found myself rock bottom. I found myself in, in negative situations or what people would call negative situations. But okay. usually that's where ingenuity comes in. Inspiration mm-hmm. comes in the recognition that I've been in this position before. Right. Also, again, it really is. When I really think back on those times when I've been on the ropes, it's like, there's a spark of life. Yeah. There's literally yeah, yeah. a spark of life within each individual person. That's yeah. just like, this can't be it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Hey, and what is besides the spark of life that you just offered? Uh, mm-hmm. What advice do you have for listeners who are currently facing their own obstacles? Got it. So there, there are, there are four steps in this law that Neville taught that I mm-hmm. practice myself burning desire know exactly what it is that you want right so yeah you're on the bottom of ropes don't think about all the things that got you there as you're sitting here what would you like mm. do you want like you're hungry do you want a sandwich do you, you know, like mm. all right what type of sandwich do you want mm-hmm. and go mm-hmm. all out like mm-hmm. don't just go pbj go you know Gordon Ramsay, you know, <laughs> yeah. like Wagyu steak sliced perfectly with like the perfect romaine lettuce and micro greens, like go all out. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, because right now I'll finish my four steps before I go on a tangent. <laughs> then once you know exactly what it is that you want, yeah, devise a scene that would imply that you had what you want. Mm hmm. Okay, so yeah. that could just be like, oh, my God, that was so delicious. Or it could be like hearing a friend being like, man, that's a ridiculously looking, that's a ridiculous looking sandwich. Or, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, we're so proud of you. Let's say it's something like a career advancement or something like that. Oh, my right. God, honey, I'm so proud of you. Like one, one I did like manifesting with this apartment that I had was just like hearing friends come in saying, Oh my God, your apartment's so big. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Oh my God. You're so style. Maybe you're the type of person who wants to change their style. My God, I love your style. Mm. You want to start your own podcast. Oh my God. Thank you so much, man. I had such a good time on your podcast. Right. Yeah, Devise yeah. a scene that would imply that you already wow. are that person. Okay. The third thing to do is replay that scene over and over in your mind's eye and keep it simple. Like it doesn't need to be complicated. Um, right. Again, we're not talking about affirmations. We're talking about the feeling that this is invoking in you. Right. It's the feeling of realness. Like it, it feels natural. It feels real. Mm-hmm. And you play that scene until it takes on that tone of reality. And then you drop it completely. Let it go and just know that it's done. You'll mm. be moved across, across a whole bridge of incident that will bring you there. You'll be compelled to take actions. People will start yeah. showing up. People yeah. will start showing up differently to confirm it. And as you, and as you go to bed at night, go to bed assuming you are this man or woman. Mm. Just start assuming that you are that person as you go to bed at night. And, and the being within you will do the work. The father within you does the work. I of my own self can do nothing, but the father within me does the work. Who is right. the father? It's your own awareness. It's your own I amness. It is the Yad Hey Vaud Hey, the Jehovah that Scripture mm. talks about. Right. And if you can, if you can truly let that, and you don't need to be Christian to understand these principles. Mm-hmm. But but I am so yeah yeah. Um, but simply put, four steps, know exactly what you want, 
Devise a scene that implies that you have what you want. Play that scene until it takes on the tones of reality, until it feels natural and real to you, and then drop it, knowing that it's done and knowing that any step sitting in your sitting on your couch or mm -hmm. going to the store or typing an email, all those things are all what's needed to match that state of consciousness. Right. And then you'll get there and you'll be like, whoa, how did all that happen? I, I couldn't have even devised all this. I, and I'm telling you, it's, it's a shocker. And the more you do it, you start to realize how powerful you actually are. Hmm. All right. That is a heck of a call to action for me. So I am going to start using some of these practices, right? Keep it simple, uh, but make Keep it, it simple. You know, I love it. I love it. All right, so we're going to shift a little bit because that was powerful. And it's early in the morning, and you are, you are. I'm awake now. Y'all got me on my favorite topic in the world. <laughs> I don't want to shift, but I got to ask a little bit. So you still are the CEO of Imag Imaginarium LLC. Yeah, All right. that's my coaching so, business. Yeah. So, so as the founder and the CEO of of Imaginarium, and am I saying that right? It's it, uh, you know how you yeah. see the letters yeah. and you sound it out, right? Yeah. What are some key strategies that you use to to grow your business? Mm, got it. Yeah. Again, uh, uh, assumption. Yeah, I, that you fall back on that. That's awesome. I, I really, I really do. Yeah, I know, yeah. man. And I've, t oh, man, I've talked to so many business coaches, and they don't want to hear me. <laughs> they don't want to wow. hear it because they're just like. Yeah. Oh, well, you're, you're like, it's not predictable in this, any other. It's like, it's not, it won't be predictable because of my assumption. Only like, mm. you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. you know, when I, when I, when I want something, I just start assuming that I have it as opposed to trying to make it happen. Cause I've done it in my business. I've right. lost a lot of money, time, and energy going through other people's strategies and this, any yeah. other, but they yeah. weren't coming from God. They were coming yeah. from somebody outside of myself. But when I right. rely on what's going on within me and it says, do this, do that, do the other. And yeah. I do this, do that and do the other. I get the results I want. But when I when I try to do, you know, uh, Russell Brunson's funnel creation mm. and this, any other, that's where I, I, I might get a client or two. But it's yeah. not worth it to me because the energy is off. And right, um, right. And it goes against my teachings. Like, I have a client right now mm -hmm. who's in. Um, he's he's a consultant, and we were we were just we were just talking. We just had a call, uh, a group call, and he was sharing how he just made more money in less time than than he could ever imagine. And what okay. happened was he was working on a project. And they wanted to do this workshop. And then another one of his clients was like, can I get on board? They connected and he was like, yeah. And he was like, you yeah. know what? I wonder if anybody else would be into this. And they came in. And then all of a sudden he, he got X amount of dollars, like a huge windfall. Right. And he's like, Jerry, that took, it took less than 30 minutes. It was the most money I've ever made like that. I was right. like, what? And, and I said, okay, share with the group. What, what exactly happened? And he was just like, Honestly, I just started as soon as like, man, what, what's, a, what's the easiest way I can make some money off this project? Mm. He didn't go out searching for a strategy or all this stuff. He's like, could you have divided, if, if you would have put it into plan to make that happen, could you have done it? He goes, no, nah, definitely not. Yeah. Wow. When, when we got to working together, this guy was everything is buttoned up strategy, this, any other, he was just super stressed. He was right. absolutely stressed. His relationship with his family members was, it was through, it was, was whacked out all yeah. this stuff. He puts me on the uh, same week. He puts me on a call with his daughter because she was interested in, in coming out here to the farm to, mm -hmm. to do some uh, work trading or whatever. Right. And I got to talking with her just to get to know her and just see if she's a fit. She says at the end of the call, she's like, Jerry, by the way, whatever you're doing with my dad, thank you. And I was like, what, what, what are you thanking me for? She's like, I've known my dad. I, she's like 26 years old. She's like, I've known my dad 26 years. Right. This dude is always on edge. I've never seen him more relaxed, 
more loving. Like mm. he has fun now. Yeah. I, I've yeah. never seen anything like it. Right. And I was like, and you know, when your clients tell you something, okay, cool. Great. Testimonial, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, but when a family member right. confirms it and then not, that's where, you know, you made an actual impact. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So yeah. that, that's what it is for me is like, okay. it's, it's knowing that it's not the strategies, folks. It, it really isn't the strategies. Strategies is secondary. Right. It's who are you being? Right. Who do you have to be in order to achieve said goal and then mm -hmm. be that mm -hmm. person? The strategies wow. will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I tell you what, that's I'm I, I'm I'm sitting here thinking, I, you know, how can I apply this? Hey, matter of fact, do you have a website? I do. Okay, I so do. don't worry, don't because I'm gonna ask you at the end. Okay. And then and in two, do you have? I know you. I know the website and, and the business is obviously to get clients and things like that. But are there like small things that potential people, offerings. the listeners, you know, yeah, yeah. offerings or freebies or something like that, some insights, a taste of yeah, your yeah, knowledge? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there, what is? Yeah. Tell me something more. You know, something. If if I was to go on your website right now, where would you want me to go first? On on my on my site, I think the. Um, I think hamster wheel to Ferris wheel is, is the offering that's on my site. I don't mm -hmm. really send people to my site. I te typically send people to my Instagram because I actually have okay. a lot of my teachings are on my Instagram. So if you want like free right. content and all that type of stuff, I would say okay. go to my, my, my Instagram. Where can the listeners find out more about you? Got it. Instagram at. Yeah, at at human dot imagination. Okay. Yeah, and and the reason why it's named that is because uh, Neville used to quote uh, William Blake. William Blake was a was a writer, poet, mystic of the 18th century, and okay. he said, he said, all that you behold, though it appears without, it is within your own wonderful human imagination in which this world of mortality is but a shadow. Mm. And, that, and that quote absolutely changed my life. And, and so I dedicated my Instagram to that name, human imagination. Yeah. And um, so if you went there, there's three to four years of content videos, um, offerings, all that type of stuff. You can get into my link tree in there as well. Okay. So there's the okay. offerings for there's offerings for hamster with a Ferris wheel. There's my one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting. There's also the faithful visionary project, which is my right. group coaching program, um, okay. which is, um, which is awesome. Okay. Um, but if, if you really want to contact me, Instagram is, is, Without a doubt. In fact, I, I'm actually even considering dropping my web page altogether mm. just because it's just okay. I it's it's a whole thing you have to manage and all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I got you. you know, I got you. We live in a new day and age, you know? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I appreciate that. Hey, mm -hmm. so, Jerry, I asked you a few questions and you you really went in and I appreciate that. I'll probably be. Uh, it's not probably going to go on your Instagram. I'm absolutely going to go into your Instagram page, but I'm probably going to be reaching out to you from a, from a personal or professional uh, perspective. I asked you a few questions and you answered it eloquently. And I appreciate the insight. Hopefully some things I wasn't aware of. What didn't I ask you that you'd like to talk about right now or that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, so a big topic uh, for me that um, I think people miss out on. I don't, I don't really necessarily feel like we kind of touched it, but we didn't define it is right. Your concept of self, <laughs> the, 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 your self identity, like if you can truly understand that 
your conceptions of yourself is what is what manifests itself in the world, mm -hmm. you'll recognize that the reason why your wife treats you the way she treats you is because of your concept of yourself. The mm -hmm. reason why your your neighbors believe I know it sounds crazy, y'all, but the reason why your neighbors act the way they act is because of your concept of yourself. It's the hard it was the hardest one for me to get. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, because I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, there are individuals doing their own thing. It was like, I, I know, but they're the whole world is reflecting you just as much as you're reflecting them. Mm. If, if you can recognize that you aren't a victim to this world, that you really are a powerful, strong creator, like so, so powerful and strong that you actually sustained and created the universe you would actually understand that these limiting beliefs that you have about yourself are what's creating the troubles you have in the world. But if you start assuming hmm. in a, a, a different concept of yourself that I'm loved, yeah, people enjoy having conversations with me. I'm yeah. a loving, I'm a loving husband. I'm a loving wife. And like, I'm happy. I'm joyful. And you think on these things and you hold on to these hmm. things. That's what you're going to get now. As you're changing your concept of yourself, you might recognize that the world's not sh not matching yet. It it takes the world a little bit of time to catch up to the light that you're shining. Right. But it, it's done as <clears throat> soon as you say it is. Right, right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, a and to add to that about concept of self, if you want to know what your concept of self is, have an uncritical observation of mm -hmm. your reactions to life. So start start becoming aware of the way you react to things. Right. I'm not saying don't react. I'm not saying to react. I'm saying Be aware. just become aware of your reactions. <clears throat> if you spent a week just having an uncritical observation of what you're saying to yourself about yourself and about others, yeah. you'll know what state of consciousness you're in. You'll know what your concept of yourself is. And then you, once you re recognize that, the next week, start actively choosing different reactions to life. Wow. So let's Sounds say you have simple, money issues. Jerry. It's simple, not easy. As my mentor would say, it's simple, not easy. It becomes yeah. easy, though. Once you pr it's practice. Right. Right. Once, you, once you practice right. it, it's a whole different game. It, it yeah. blows the water. But let's say it's a money issue. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to the gas station, you're just like, you feel that feeling in your gut, like, oh my God, gas prices just keep going up. That's a reaction. Yeah. What's, what's what concept, what concept of yourself would you have to be holding in order to have that reaction? Okay. Well, if you're, if money isn't an issue for you, you wouldn't react the same way. Right. Right. That's the concept of yourself. Mm. Yeah, it's a whole thing. I like I have a whole lecture yeah. about that and all the all the others, all the other things as well. I think I'm going to try to entice you to come back on and we're just going to focus on one one section. I tried to do like a a, a 99 or a 101 course, right? Instead of honing be in. Fun. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, let's let's collab and, and talk about that and see if we can make something happen. Um, because yeah. you got a lot of a lot of very interesting perspectives, you know, knowledge, I should say, not necessarily a perspective on some things. And I definitely want to tune in and tap in, you know, to that because it's 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 only beneficial to do so. Yeah. Um, Thank I you. definitely understand certain concepts about things, but not necessarily the law of um, the law assumption. of assumption. Right. Um, you know, just in how I react. So I know how I'm reflective or, or I see what I am, but now to take that a step further is where I'd like to go. And, and having yeah. that conversation with you, I think would, would absolutely help. And then it would help the listeners as well as something that's your, yeah. your personal legend. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is meant to be fun, by the way. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a, I'm a goofball. This is, as far as I'm concerned, this is super spiritual teaching, but yeah, it's not meant to be, tough it's not meant to be hard it's meant to be fun mm -hmm. because i don't know i believe god create created us to experience the fullness of life 
All right. Hey, well, thanks, Jerry. We we went a little bit over, so hopefully I didn't go too deep into your day. But thanks for, uh, for sharing your incredible journey and insights with me today. Your expertise and experiences in the law of assumption have truly enlightened me and hopefully the listeners as well. And to the listeners, thank you for tuning in. We hope that you found this episode as inspiring and empowering as I did. And don't forget to subscribe to Hindsight the Podcast on Spotify, YouTube, and other popular streaming apps. Until next time, remember to reflect on your past choices and make wise decisions for a successful future. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight the Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And while I have you here, why don't you take your mouse and go over and click on that subscribe button. No, no, not right there. Over to the right. To, no, no, down, down, right, right there. Boom. Thank you. Now, thank you for subscribing to Hindsight the Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones.